Carbide lanterns were developed over 100 years ago for use in domestic lighting and were quickly adapted for automobiles, bicycles, and mining applications. These lanterns have largely been replaced by battery-powered flashlights and headlamps, but are still in use by artisanal and small-scale gold miners in El Oro Province, Ecuador. This video supports an activity developed at Mercer University used to introduce general chemistry students to the environmental and human health impacts of artisanal and small-scale gold mining, or ASGM as it is often referred to. During this activity, students are able to practice skills and concepts learned throughout the semester. The viewer will be provided with a very brief overview of ASGM and how a carbide lamp operates. Although the activity is designed to introduce students to ASGM, chemistry instructors can use the video of the carbide lamp separately to teach students about a myriad of chemical concepts learned throughout general chemistry. Links in the video description will lead you to a problem set that students can work through to practice solving problems related to Gen Chem. It has recently been estimated that 16 million artisanal and small-scale gold miners in developing nations around the world produce 350 to 480 metric tons of gold annually. In 2011, this represented between 16 and 20 percent of global gold production. Artisanal miners often use rudimentary practices to isolate gold from ore, and often use elemental mercury to concentrate the gold. The United Nations now recognizes artisanal and small-scale gold mining as the number one source of anthropogenic mercury emissions to air and water in the world. Mercury is a neurotoxin, and exposure to mercury vapor can result in debilitating symptoms such as memory loss and tremors. It can also damage the kidneys. In high concentrations, exposure to mercury vapor can lead to death. Although ASGM is now receiving international attention due to the dangers associated with mercury pollution, the reality is that mercury is only one of many dangers that miners face. Another danger that miners face is the process of extracting ore. Mines are often poorly ventilated and not reinforced. The lack of education related to mining engineering and safety results in mines that collapse, often injuring and killing miners. In addition, inadequate ventilation in the mines can result in lack of oxygen or carbon monoxide intoxication. This results in loss of consciousness and even death. Mines can be dark and dangerous places for untrained miners. We are interested in introducing students to ASGM practices, and in order to start a discussion regarding ASGM, we have developed an activity centered around a carbide lantern that miners use. This particular lantern was purchased in a mining supply store in Zaruma, Ecuador, for approximately $20. It is produced by Hercusa. The company's contact information is available in the description of this video. Although it may be difficult to obtain a new lantern, you can also find these lanterns on eBay. The design of the lamp is very simple and consists of two chambers. The lower chamber contains small pieces of calcium carbide, and the upper chamber contains water. The lower chamber screws into the upper chamber. Take note of the rubber gasket that serves to seal the two chambers together. Turning a knob on the water reservoir allows water to slowly drip onto the calcium carbide. The chemical reaction that results forms flammable, gaseous acetylene. The acetylene flows through a small opening where it is lit with either a spark or an open flame. The resulting flame is backed by a concave mirror that distributes the light. It is important to revisit the rubber gasket. It serves two purposes. First, it prevents water from accidentally entering the lower chamber and forming acetylene. Second, it also prevents the formed acetylene gas from igniting in the lower chamber. If the two chambers are inadequately sealed, flames will form at the joint. Even though these systems have been safely used for decades, we will make sure that we have a fire extinguisher on hand. We begin by massing 6.5 grams of calcium carbide and sealing the lamp. Approximately 50 milliliters of water is added to the upper chamber.
The valve is then open, producing the acetylene gas. After enough acetylene is generated to push the air out of the lantern, it is ignited using a match. The bright white flame's intensity can be increased or decreased by controlling the rate of addition of the water using the valve. Closing this valve will result in stopping the production of acetylene, which will extinguish the flame. Once the lamp is ignited, it can be safely moved. The following clip demonstrates the effectiveness of the lamp. The lights in the classroom will be turned off, and the only light source in the room will be the lamp. It is easy to read the periodic table of elements on the wall using only this small lamp, which is shining on the table from approximately 30 feet away. When the lamp is extinguished, you can truly see what an efficient light source a carbide lamp is. At this time, you can pause the video and begin the provided worksheet or work problems related to the lantern. Perhaps while working your problems, you determine that the limiting reagent for this particular series of reactions is the calcium carbide. Inspection of the lower chamber reveals that the calcium carbide has in fact been completely consumed, and all that remains is the calcium hydroxide produced. The upper chamber still contains water, demonstrating that water was, in fact, in excess. To summarize, ASGM is a major source of employment in developing nations that results in the emission of large amounts of mercury. Mercury is highly toxic, and a miner's life is a dangerous one. A discussion of ASGM concepts is not necessary to use the carbide lantern to support this activity, but in order to spark discussion of ASGM in general chemistry, a carbide lantern can be used to demonstrate any number of chemical concepts. We hope that you've enjoyed this video.